Hi, Alex Forte here, the art of simple golf. I am a, on a quick pit stop in the UK and I caught up with my buddy here, Alistair Davis. Now we have a really cool lesson for you and it's about head movement, right? And what you see a lot of times and what I see is golfers basically keeping their head down and it just kills so many aspects of the golf swing, right? What, what problems is keeping the head down and keeping the chest down just how does that disconnect us? How does that kill consistency, power, and all that? Well, all of those really, but the main thing for me is when you keep your head down too long, it really restricts you to transfer your energy into the golf ball and beyond. Yeah. And it also makes your radius of your golf swing shorten, which affects contact massively. So the guys are the kind of top of the ball and then get scared and think, okay, I need to keep my head down longer. And the buddies are all saying to them, you lifted your head. So it's actually compounding the issue. So when you say the radius, what do you mean on that? Well, if you imagine if you have your radius at the start of your golf swing from kind of your left shoulder to the club head, and it's obviously resting on against the floor, if my radius was to shorten by my arms yeah. bending, the club then raises up from the ground. Well, we've changed from, like, we're starting out in this position. So as soon as you alter that, even by, I mean, like a centimeter, your, your shots are affected drastically, aren't they? Obviously, you could bend over more when you swing in and make that radius back up. Someone like Lee West would kind of do that. His arm bends. Well, we all, as kind of humans, adjust to our task a little bit, don't we? But when we have these overcompensations, it makes it harder to repeat, especially if you're not practicing six hours a day. Correct. Yeah. So what, what we tend to see a lot in the lesson tee and on, on, you know, obviously with golfers on the golf course is when they keep the head down too long, these arms then have to bend. Yeah. because obviously there's no room for them and the body's not rotating and when the body stops rotating the hands then become more active okay. because the acceleration passes through to the next link in the chain so we get a lot of what i call club head throw away and a lot of excessive wrist extension which gives us very poor control of the club head okay. from the point of view of a good player it's element like and your kind of golf swing if you look at that right. and then from the higher handicap situation obviously if the head stays down too long we don't transfer the weight forward so our low point of our golf swing tends to be either too early or we lose the radius either okay. one of those two scenarios all right so inconsistency and crap shots basically yes all right so what can we do to what it, what, what drill, what are we looking for instead to sort of keep that radius going? Okay. One of the things I like to tell people to do is actually use their tops, the zips or buttons on the top, if yeah. you have such a thing. In your case, you have a zip, which is perfect. I like to get them to feel that their chin and zip kind of mirror each other. So when they're hitting the golf shot, <clears throat> if I stand to the side here, as I'm swinging through, I want to try and get my chin and zip to match each other and marry each other during the shot. So the drill would be a kind of half-powered swing and try and get the chin and zip to follow as each other. As if they're connected. As if they're connected. And they're All moving right. at the same pace so, and time. So you, we, instead of being like here where we've got separation, yeah. and this is something I do, and it's something you've kind of discussed with me, it's like, I don't know why I do it, but it's something I do. Maybe it comes from tennis a little bit, but I, even with tennis, I would have sort of stood up. So I still think it comes from the, you know, the incorrect natural tendency we all have is to like, hit at the ball and kind of just stay down it in that way. So, all right. So if I really think about the zip and the chin being connected, I just want to feel there through the ball. Like at what point do I want that sensation? Is it before, is it just after, where? It's going to be before ideally, but okay. you know, it, it, I always use this, the phrase, and excuse me if I've said this before, feed what you need. So for you, you've got to feel like your head comes up a lot earlier than it does in your particular golf yeah. swing. And these guys we're talking about here, the same. So you would want to feel your head comes up almost the start of the downswing. When I say up, it's rotating. So it's kind of rotating and moving rather than kind of going backwards and downwards. That's the bad action. So don't have to worry, you know, people don't have to worry about watching themselves actually strike the ball, correct? No, I can hit golf shots for you and I'm sure you can too because you're a talented golfer where I actually don't look at the ball at all. Okay. And if you look at like an Annika or a David Duval... Or Stenson, they're here. Stenson's the same as well. He's the modern version of those guys, yeah. if you like. Maybe it's a Swedish thing. But <laughs> I would certainly prefer to have more a Stenson eye line than okay. I would do your eye line. All One right. for injury as well, because your right track yeah. will get awfully tight, short and, and trapped Neck in there. Neck injuries. Yeah. All right. So what, what I would say is uh, the fault is we're kind of more like that. Yeah. Right, that's kind of like you can see the sort of almost whiplash effect. I accentuate it a little bit there, but how do we want to practice this? Just with half swings to begin with? I would go half swings, and I'd really try and excessively move the chin and the sh so uh, chin here. quicker. Yes, again, so doesn't, from, doesn't, from about there, 
correct? Extending through? Yes. Again, it doesn't have to go upwards, it's more a case of it kind of rotating, isn't it? Okay. Rotating. So I'm um, being guided more by the zip or the chin? You have to own your own feels. Okay. Again, obviously the, the concept is move at the same time, and if you think it's the chin or the zip, I don't mind. So it's very important that when I, when I teach people, I want them to own their own feels. So if you feel it's your chin, if you feel it's a zip, that's your instinctive feel that you would use yeah. yourself personally. I mean, even just on that little half pitch shot there, there was a nice sensation of just being completely through the ball. Like I, I didn't have to hit at it. It just sort of collected itself and just sort of came through. It's kind of a weird sensation a little bit, but it feels really good. So they just need to keep practicing those half shots. I'd start at half because it's easier to do and then build up the full pace. Yeah. Because obviously a full pace is much more difficult to make a change. So start a half pace and slowly encourage the pace to increase and find your point of failure. Okay. Whether that's 50%, 60%, 70% of power. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks, Alistair. Like, give that a try, guys. It might feel a little bit weird at first, but trust yourself. And you should feel that connection, a bit more freedom getting through the ball. All right. Awesome.